Please be seated. The sitting is open. The present sitting will be devoted to the making of solemn declarations by four new members of the court. In keeping with long-standing practice, judges elected in the triennial elections by the United Nations General Assembly and the Security Council begin their nine-year nine term of office on 6 February the historic date on which the first members of the court were elected in London at the General Assembly session and immediately commenced their mandate. Thus, with effect from today, Mr. Juan Manuel Gomez Robledo, Ms. Sara Hal Cleveland, Mr. Bogdan Lucian Aurescu, and Mr. Diret Ladi became members of the court. At the same time, Judge Hilary Charlesworth, who had previously been elected in November 2021 to serve for the remainder of the late Judge Crawford's mandate, was re-elected for a further term of office. We congratulate our new colleagues as well as our re-elected colleague, and are very happy to have the benefit of their participation in the work of the court. I take this opportunity to thank our outgoing retiring judges, former President Donohue, Vice President Gevorgian, Judges Benuna and Robinson, for their notable contribution to the work of the court and wish them all the very best in their future endeavors. I am pleased that two of our former colleagues, President Donohue and Vice President Gevorgian, joined us today and are sitting in the Great Hall of Justice. Before inviting our esteemed new colleagues to make their solemn declarations, I would like to express a few words of gratitude to our departing friends who have each, in their own special way, made a lasting impact on the court. We are particularly indebted to our outgoing president, who has ably guided us through the extremely busy last three years with wisdom, dignity, and grace, inspiring us with a mastery of the varied and complex legal disputes and questions put before the court. President Donohue's style of leadership has been one based on respect and consensus building, always open to the views of other judges and fair in her judicial summing up of our deliberations. We are also grateful to our outgoing Vice President, Gevorgian, who, in addition to exercising the function of acting president in one complex case, has found the time to oversee the law clerkship program and the Judicial Fellowship Program, welcoming a new generation of talented young lawyers to the court. Let me now turn to the doyen of the departing group, Judge Benuna, who has given 18 years of dedicated service to this institution. He has informed and enlivened every debate and deliberation with his intellectual brio, and fine rhetorical skills, making sure that every conclusion on a point of law was thoroughly put to the test, thereby ultimately enriching the jurisprudence of the court. Finally, I would like to pay tribute to Judge Robinson, who has not only brought to bear a wealth of his expertise, but has also constantly brought a sense of historical justice and moral authority to the performance of his functions as a member of the court. The court is most appreciative to all four retiring colleagues for their individual and collegial contribution to the work of the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. This institution has benefited immensely from their devoted service over many years 
given with utmost independence and impartiality. They are to be congratulated for the legacy that they leave at the court. Dear President Donohue, Vice President Gevorgian, on behalf of everyone at the court, let me extend our sincere thanks to you for the unerring commitment you have shown to the cause of international justice. Throughout your respective mandates, you have demonstrated an absolute conviction in the role of the court to assist the international community in its quest for peace through justice. You have also been charming colleagues and friends, affable, loyal, and genuine. Your peers on the bench will miss your presence at the Peace Palace, and we very much hope that you will take every opportunity to visit us in the near future. It just remains for me to bid you a fond farewell and to wish each of you every success as you all begin a new chapter in your lives. We are also grateful to our departing colleagues, Judges Benuna and Robinson, who cannot be with us here today for their many contributions to the court's work. We wish them a happy retirement. Let me now turn to the main purpose of this sitting, which is to proceed with the swearing-in of the four newly elected members of the court so as to complete the composition of the court as we begin a new triennium. Article 20 of the statute of the court provides that members of the court shall, before taking up their duties, make a solemn declaration in open court that they will exercise their powers impartially and conscientiously. I recall initially that uh, Judge Charles was made her solemn declaration on 7 December 2021, shortly after she took up her duties and that pursuant to Article 4, Paragraph 3 of the Rules of Court, she is not required to make another solemn declaration since her new term of office is continuous with the previous one. I shall now say a few words about each of the four new members of the court and then invite them to make the solemn declaration in the order in which they take precedence pursuant to Article 3, Paragraph 3 of the Rules of Court. Monsieur Judge Juan Manuel Gomez Robledo Verduzco of Mexican nationality holds a law degree from the Université de Paris 1, as well as a master's degree in international relations from the Institut d'études politiques de Paris, a master of laws from the Université de Paris Nanterre, and a PhD from the Faculty of Law of the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. He has enjoyed a preeminent career in diplomacy while also taking on a range of academic roles. He served his country as Deputy Permanent Representative to the UN on two occasions and as Ambassador to France and Monaco. Among his many high-level governmental appointments, he served for nine years as Deputy Foreign Minister for Multilateral Affairs and Human Rights, having earlier served as Legal Counsel at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico and Chef de Cabinet of the Foreign Minister. Judge Gomez Robledo has also represented his country as agent before this court in two cases. The first concerning Avena and other Mexican nationals, Mexico versus United States, and the second concerning the request for interpretation of the judgment in the earlier set of proceedings. He was also part of the delegation of Mexico with regard to the advisory opinions, proceedings, excuse me, before this court on the legality of the threat or use of nuclear weapons. Judge Gomez Robledo has moreover served with distinction as a member of the United Nations International Law Commission, where he was appointed Special Rapporteur on the Provisional Application of Treaties. He has served as Chairman of the Sixth Committee of the 61st Regular Session of the United Nations General Assembly and as Chairman of the Drafting Committee of the Diplomatic Conference on the Arms Trade Treaty 
Last but not least, let me touch on Judge Gomez Robledo's academic record within Mexico City. He has been Professor of International Law at the Universidad Panamericana, the Universidad Iberoamericana, and the Colegio de Mexico. More recently, in 2023, he taught a special course on the International Law of Disarmament at the Hague Academy of International Law. He is the author of a number of publications and the recipient of numerous prestigious honours. Judge Gomez Robledo Verduzco, we welcome you. Judge Sarah Hall Cleveland, a national of the United States of America, graduated magna cum laude from Brown University before completing a master's degree in history at the University of Oxford and obtaining a Juris Doctor degree from Yale Law School, having been awarded various prizes for academic excellence. In her wide-ranging and distinguished career in the legal field, Judge Cleveland has worked as an academic, has participated in various multilateral institutions, and held high-ranking advisory positions within her government. Until recently, Judge Cleveland was Louis Hankin Professor of Human and Constitutional Rights at the Law School of Columbia University. Prior to this prestigious appointment, she was Mars McLean Professor in Law at the University of Texas School of Law and has been a visiting professor at many world-renowned universities in the United States and abroad. In terms of Judge Cleveland's experience in multilateral institutions, she has served on the Ad hoc, Ad hoc Conciliation Commission Qatar United Arab Emirates, established by the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. In addition, she was elected as an independent expert to the United Nations Human Rights Committee and was a member of the Commission for Democracy Through Law, the so-called Venice Commission. She has also served as co-coordinating reporter of the American Law Institute, overseeing the preparation of a major treatise on U.S. foreign relations law. Judge Cleveland has moreover been called upon her by her government to provide expert legal assistance in a number of ways. She has been a long-standing member of the Secretary of State's Advisory Committee on International Law at the United States Department of State, where she earlier served in the Office of the Legal Advisor as Attorney Advisor on International Law and as Counselor on International Law. Judge Cleveland has published extensively on a range of international law issues, in particular on human rights, law, and is affiliated to various academic journals. She is a member of numerous expert bodies and professional associations, as well as being a member inter alia of the American Society of International Law and the American Bar Association. Finally, let me add that Judge Cleveland has been awarded a number of professional honors in recognition of her outstanding achievements. Judge Cleveland, we welcome you. Monsieur Le Judge Bogdan Lucian Orescu, of Romanian nationality, studied law and history at the University of Bucharest before being awarded a PhD in legal sciences, summa cum laude, from his alma mater. Prior to becoming a judge, he enjoyed an illustrious career in academia while in tandem pursuing a very distinguished career in public service holding high office within the Romanian government. Until his recent election to the court, Judge Orescu was Professor of Public International Law at the Faculty of Law of the University of Bucharest, an institution which has always been at the heart of his scholarly pursuits. At a governmental level, he has played various key roles over the years, serving inter alia on two occasions as Minister of Foreign Affairs of Romania, but also as Presidential Advisor for Foreign Policy, Ambassador at Large, Secretary of State for Strategic Affairs, for Global Affairs and for European Affairs, and Director General for Legal Affairs at the Romanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. 
Judge Oresco has also represented his country in multiple fora, heading several Romanian delegations, including in connection with the meetings of the United Nations Sixth Committee, the review conferences of the Rome Statute, and the Committee of Legal Advisers on Public International Law of the Council of Europe. At the age of 30, he was appointed agent of Romania before this court in the case concerning maritime delimitation in the Black Sea, Romania versus Ukraine. He's also served as agent in a case before the European Court of Human Rights. In addition, Judge Oresco has been member of the International Law Commission, member of the Commission for Democracy through Law of the Council of Europe, the Venice Commission, member of the Permanent Court of Arbitration, and arbitrator designated by Romania according to Article 2 of Annex 7 to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. He has, moreover, acted as co-rapporteur of the Venice Commission. Judge Oresco has published widely on a broad range of international law topics and is the recipient of many awards, awards and decorations. Judge Oresco, we welcome you. Judge Diret Ladi of South African nationality graduated in law cum laude from the University of Pretoria, after which he obtained a Master of Laws degree from the University of Connecticut and was subsequently awarded a PhD in international law from Erasmus University in Rotterdam. He has combined an outstanding academic career with high-level positions as legal expert, both within the South African government and in the context of the United Nations. As an academic, Judge Ladi was until recently Professor of International Law at the University of Pretoria, where he held the South African Research Chair of International Constitutional Law and the future Africa Chair in Global Equity in Africa. He has also lectured in law at the University of South Africa and the University of Stellenbosch, as well as having been invited to lecture as visiting professor of law at various renowned universities around the world. Within the government of South Africa, his career at the Department of International Relations and Cooperation began with his appointment as principal state law advisor in international law, after which he served as legal counselor of the South African Permanent Mission to the United Nations in New York, and then a special advisor to the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. In addition, he has acted in the area as chair of the United Nations International Law Commission and special rapporteur on Jus Cogens, and counsel in two cases before the appeals chamber of the International Criminal Court. Judge Gladi has a great many publications on international law to his name, in which he has focused on a range of complex issues from peremptory norms of general international law to the extraterritorial use of force against non-state actors, a topic on which he lectured at the Hague Academy of International Law. Judge Ladi is also co-editor-in-chief of the South African Yearbook of International Law, president of the South African branch of the International Law Association, and is a member of the Institut de Droit International. Judge Ladi, we welcome you. I shall now invite each of these judges to make the solemn declaration prescribed by the statute. And I request all those present now to rise. Judge Gomez Robledo, please. Je déclare I solemnly declare th that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as judge honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously. Et en toute conscience. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Juge. And now I give the floor to Judge Cleveland. I solemnly declare that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as judge 
honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously. Thank you very much. And I call um, Judge Aurescu. You have the floor, sir. I solemnly declare that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as judge, honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously. Thank you very much. And I call now on Judge Tladi. I solemnly declare that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as judge, honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously. <coughs> Thank you very much, Judge Tladi. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. La Cour the Court takes note of the solemn declarations made by Judges Gomez Robredo, Cleveland, Aurescu, and Tladi, and I declare them duly installed as members of the Court. I have no doubt that in its new composition, the Court will continue to strive to meet the challenges that lie ahead in its quest to fulfill its mandate under the United Nations Charter and its statute, namely, to decide in accordance with international law such disputes as are submitted to it and to give advisory opinions on any legal question at the request of the authorized organs of the United Nations and some other international organizations. The court's docket currently lists a record 21 cases, both contentious and advisory, raising far-ranging questions of law of fundamental importance to the international community. Moreover, the notable upward trend in terms of the number of incidental proceedings being brought by states, especially requests for the indication of provisional measures on an urgent basis, creates further expectations. At a time when the court seems to be ever more in demand, the judges on the bench stand ready to harness this momentum and deliver meaningful legal solutions to what can at times appear to be intractable disputes. In seeking to fulfill its time-honored role as the principal judicial organ of the United Nations, the court knows that it will be able to rely on the expertise, insight, and unimpeachable integrity of our four new peers. Before bringing today's sitting to a close, I would like to invite all those present to join the members of the court for a small reception in the main lobby of the Peace Palace in honor of our newly sworn in judges. Thank you. The sitting is closed.